Welcome and thank you for joining us for the second half hour, The Factor Uncensored. We're following an investigation developing tonight in Fullerton, California. A man died last month after police shot him with a bean bag, a round of bean bags. Newly released video body camera footage shows what went down between officers and the victim. Those bean bags are not intended to be deadly, but the Fullerton Police Department says one of the bean bag rounds actually pierced the victim's chest, killing him. He bled out. I asked my next guest for more details. And Gregory Dupree with TLAC Now Security Services joins us now from Dallas. Gregory, when you take a look at the shooting in Fullerton, California, by the Fullerton Police Department, where the man was uh, confronted in front of a McDonald's at 3 in the morning, obviously, before we get to the, the details, it appears either the man was high or may have had some mental health issues, not quite sure. But your right. thoughts on him being killed as a result of a bean bag piercing his chest. Right. When we think about bean bags, we think about non-lethal use of force. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, it was a tragic event. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I can't, well, I'm not going to say unfortunately. But from what I saw, I didn't see whether the police officers did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were authorized to use those weapons by the department. And from what I saw, they more than likely fought policy and deploying them you know they gave the guy ample opportunity to comply but in his uh altered state it was obvious he wasn't going to comply right. uh, only thing that i can say that really surprised me is the fact that they deployed the taser and the beanbag uh, the, the, the beanbag shotgun, it, it looked almost simultaneous when both of the weapons were being used. And I would chalk that up to more of a lack of communication between officers. You know, it was obviously the taser was ineffective, but before it, that determination was obvious, uh, the guy started firing. He started firing in succession. You know, mm -hmm. usually when you fire a beanbag, you fire one to see if it has an effect, then you continue to fire, but not as rapidly as this guy did. That was one thing I can say he did, but I don't believe that had any effect. I'm not an expert on that. Uh, let me clarify this. But I don't believe that had any effect on the beanbag uh, rupturing and, you know, spilling out its contents. Right. And do we see this as an anomaly, a fluke, something that rarely happens? You know, because, and, and my focus is the being bag. It was designed to not kill you. Right. And according right. to investigators, it did because it ruptured his chest, causing him to bleed out. Right. Well, I was surprised to find that the contents within the being bag were metal pellets. Uh, the bean bags I've seen before had different contacts in it, and they were just as effective. But as I said, I don't, I don't, I can't see faulting the officers in this. If I would fault anybody, it would be the manufacturer uh, because the bean bag ruptured. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they might want to take a look at not only the design of the bag that holds the contents, but the contents that they place inside of the bag. You know, you might want to look at some type of alternative to place inside of the bags, which some of these bean bag companies do. Because well, and you think of bean bag, and you say, "Well, maybe something like beans may be inside, not metal <laughs> pellets." You yeah, know, that's but, that's essentially a sh what's in the shotgun shell. You know, right? Yeah, well, that's true, but it, well, in, in shotgun shells they have pellets, except for slugs. But the thing is, it would take a lot of beans inside of a bag to be, a, in my opinion, to be effective against an uh, <laughs> yeah, individual yeah. like that. And then you got to remember, I said, it's got to go through a small barrel of a shotgun. Mm -hmm. So the beanbag has to, you know, be able to, uh, when when it's full, it has to maintain a certain size so it can go through there and be effective. So what's the standard content of these beanbags that you know from being in law enforcement for years? That is, uh, that varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. It could be anything from sand. It could be anything from a... Um, I don't want to call it a, well, for lack of a better term, a heavy foam material, and it could be plastic pellets as opposed to metal or lead, which were, which were the contents of this beanbag. 
<laughs> so when we take a look at this case and, and we think, okay, non-lethal, and of course we've had situations where it depends on someone's body, what they're going through when when a taser has killed them, and that's right. supposed to be non-lethal. It just right. depends on the person's the circumstances and the situation and how long those tasers are deployed and held, the trigger held down. Right. Well, and you have to be, uh, you have to realize that these weapons aren't always effective. You know, we hope in most situations that they would, in all situations that they would be, but it's obvious uh, uh, individuals such as this gentleman, because when I was listening to the video, they, uh, one of the officers asked his companion, what was he on? And I could almost make out that he said, it sounded like he said PCP. Mm -hmm. And if that was the case, it would explain a lot as to why this guy wasn't complying after he was tased and why it took him so long to go down after he was uh, shot with the beanbags as well. Mm -hmm. Got it.